Hey guys, I'm Adam Caesar. This is another episode of Project Black T-Shirt. It's been a little while since we did a list, a kind of top five, top ten, top whatever, uh, book list. And we've been talking about a lot of new release movies lately. We've been talking about a lot of different uh, films and giving book recommendations to go along with those. So it's time, I thought, for a pure book episode. And today we're going to do the top five vampire novels you haven't read. Now, before you get your knives and your pitchforks out, I realize that that is a very clickbaity title to name a video, and I realize that some of you, some of my regular listeners, some of my uh, friends who read a lot, are going to be sitting there like, vampire novels I haven't read, try me, Caesar. Well, I don't really mean that you haven't read. I mean novels you might not have read. I mean we're going to talk about novels that aren't Stephen King, aren't Anne Rice, aren't Charlene Harris, we're not going to kind of, definitely not Stephanie Meyer, we're not talking Bram Stoker here, we're not, we're not going to hit that, that, those normal um, beats of vampire fiction. We're going to talk about things that are a little bit off the beaten path, some of which are a little newer, some of which are, are more recent, they're kind of neo-classics, things I want to highlight, things I want to talk about, um, and authors I really like. So sit tight, get, we're going to get to that list in a second, but something very special happened since the last time I was able to record uh, a video. Uh, my novel, Video Night, one of my books that I wrote, um, was re-released in a brand new uh, ebook edition. The paperback is coming in a couple days, so even by the time maybe I upload this, or by the time uh, this video, by the time you watch this video, it may already be for sale on paperback. But the ebook is definitely for sale right now. It's on Kindle Unlimited. If you don't want to pay me, if you just want to read it, um, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it was my first full-length novel released. Uh, Went back through, it's got, um, it was originally released through Sam Hain Publishing, uh, the great Don Dioria uh, was, the, was the editor on the book. Um, it's got some new little nips and tucks throughout, it has a new afterword by me, it has a new cover, which is beautiful, by a, an artist named Frederick Rich Richardson. And if you haven't read me before, it's kind of the perfect place to start. Go pick it up, go click links down in the description. If you buy the book, I would love to hear from you. Uh, please drop a review on Amazon. The book had 40-something reviews originally, but they, they've been wiped out on this new edition. So if you've even if you've read the book before, if you're a reader, please uh, take the time to drop by Amazon, put you know two to three sentences, what you thought of the book, honest opinions. Even if you didn't like the book, I want to hear it. Stuff really helps me, really helps indie authors. Okay, that's that. We're done with that. Black T-shirt books, new edition of Video Night is out now. Top five vampire novels you haven't read. And this first one, our number five pick, is a little bit of a cheat because I'm betting out of everyone watching, uh, most people, um, or the most amount of people who, if you're gonna say I've read something on this list, it's gonna be this. The Light at the End by John Skip and Craig Spector. This awesome 80s cover is catching the light and reflecting it beautifully. Um, this is a, um, this is a first, uh, Bantam, uh, paperback edition, I believe, mass market paperback edition, um, got this beautiful puppy used, it's actually signed by both, um, Skip and Spectre, but it's not signed to me, it's signed to some dude named Smitty, I found this at a used bookstore, um, actually, while hanging out with, uh, Scott Cole and Brian Keane, it's not to name drop, but, so, to Smitty, this is not the edition that I read this in. I just thought this was a cool edition to hold this up. The Light at the End, for those of you unfamiliar, is one of the great vampire novels, but also one of the great late 1980s splatterpunk novels. And if you're not familiar with the term splatterpunk, uh, John Skip and Craig Spector as co-writers are, are definitely one of the founders of the movement, or definitely one of the kind of like late 80s bad boys of um, horror fiction. They were on they were on talk shows. It was Skip Spector, uh, Clive Barker, Joe Lansdale, David J. Scow. These guys uh, were, were killing it, and they were bringing a kind of like new punk, um, pseudo beatnik, anti authoritarian voice to horror. And none more in evidence, I feel like, than The Light of the End. There's no more better exemplar of this movement than The Light of the End, um, which, you know, gave birth to like countless other bad boy vampires inspired Buffy and inspired. Um, we wouldn't have 
a lot of the vampire fiction that we that we have. We wouldn't have a lot of the vampire pop culture we have. I feel like if it weren't for the light at the end. So if you haven't read the light at the end, that's that's the book that kicks off this list. Number four on the list this is an author that if you've watched my other lists. You've heard me talk about at length, if you've watched my other videos, Mongrels, I gave its own spotlight. I talked about it at length in its own video. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones, The Night Cyclist. Another book that's actually kind of a cheat to put on this list because it is a very, very short book. But Tor is selling it by itself. It's 99 cents is like a little ebook, but I think it's also free if you go to Tor.com. Um, they do these uh, novelettes and novellas that they release. Very quick read. I think it's like 40 pages, maybe not even. Um, and even to put it on a list where they're, where we're talking about vampire fiction is almost a spoiler because the vampire is almost incidental to the entire story. It's about this guy. He's a, um, he's a chef. He's uh, kind of a mess up. He gets out of work real late at the restaurant. He boxes up his knives, he and he puts them on his bike, and he, he cycles his way back home. And you kind of get, like, the idea that this is, like, real, like, freedom of the night is, is, is cycling. And he runs into a vampire one night, and this is kind of the, the exchange that they have. It's kind of just a quick, you know, couple scene um, story, but if you haven't read Stephen Graham Jones before, or even if you have, it's, it's, a, it's a really good place to start. And if you like vampires, it's a really interesting take on... Um, vampire lore and and the way that vampires are presented um because it's not it's a very like i don't want to say realistic but very just like the fact that this dude is a vampire the fact that this cyclist is a vampire is, is just is just one of the aspects that makes him interesting number three and if you watch my list of top five books that should become movies or top five horror novels that should be movies i don't remember what i called it but you heard me talk about enter night which is by michael rowe it is a, it, I think I pitched it as the Canadian Salem's Lot, and if you want to hear me talk more about that, you can go watch that other video. But Michael Rowe, Enter Night, this is the closest thing to a traditional vampire story we have on this list. Um, if you want kind of, you know, guys in capes, kind of sing one single vampire terrorizing a small town um, with all these other kind of crazy um, side stories going on and, and connections to... Canadian history and indigenous history. Um, this is the book for you, Enter Night. I, I, I really, really love it. I mean, I put it on two videos now. I think you should read it, it's really good. Number two, and it was actually tough. Um, if you want to not consider this like a countdown list, if you want to just put these all on an equal playing field, you kind of should. Um, but one of my favorite books on this list, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to make it number one or number two, it's called Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And this book, if you kind of gave me the elevator pitch, I don't think I would be as interested in it as, as I am, which I just kind of blind bought it. Um, some friends had recommended it. People, I saw people were reading it and, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get that book. That sounds cool. I'm in the mood for a vampire novel. It is incredible. And the way, the thing about it that kind of would turn me off is I would almost describe it as something like, um, if you, if you like vampire movies and if you like kind of um, trashy new vampire movies, if you like like something like uh, the Underworld series or maybe even like the world building and mythos of something like Daybreakers, Certain Dark Things is, is, is the story of a vampire who, who is pushed out of her turf in the uh, semi-alternate universe futuristic um, Mexican vampire cartels and has to uh, go into hiding in Mexico City and befriends a, a young human boy. It's it's filled with like different kinds of vampires. There are like you know Euro there's a distinction between European vampires and classic um, Mexican vampires that were like around when the Aztecs were there. There's there's all these different distinctions. There's these like these little futuristic flourishes. Like she has a you know a Doberman that is like a, um, you know larger than a normal dog and is you know has, is tattooed with like cybernetic tattoos. So it's got like this kind of a little bit of a cyberpunk feel, like a very light cyberpunk feel, a very light like kind of fantasy element to it, but it is it is great. And one of the things that I love about it is I have just finished, or, or, I, a couple months ago, I finished reading um, Don Winslow's Power of the Dog and the Cartel. And this feels like, what if you took um, the cartel and you added vampires to it? It's really great. It has like 
a lot of pathos. It has a lot of like character building, and you really care, come to care about these characters. And the 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 plot is just like super tightly wound. You have all this stuff that feels like it's going to be like world exposition, um, but and all these different vampire rules that are different than the way um, most vampires work. Uh, but it all comes back and it all feeds into the plot, and it, and it just moves like grease lightning. It's a it's a quick read, and it's just super enjoyable read. Yeah, Sylvia Moreno Garcia's Certain Dark Things, that's my number two pick. And if I really like that book, my number one pick, as far as vampire novels go, it's one of my favorite vampire novels, um, and it quickly became that, because I, I mean, I think I read it less than a year ago. And my buddy, shout out, shout out to Joseph, he had, he had told me, uh, this Christopher Buhlman guy, if you like horror, you should try reading one of his books. I wasn't in the market for a vampire novel. He told me they were all good. He told me um, the audiobooks were great because Buhlman actually reads them himself. He has a, he has a great reading voice. He's like a clear performer. Um, so I just went to Audible and I just clicked the top one that came up and it was called The Lesser Dead. So I just bought The Lesser Dead. And I started listening to it and I was like, ah, crap, this is a vampire novel. Because I'd been reading a few and I kind of wanted to get out of the habit of it. But... This is far and away one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. I'm sure the, I haven't read the text version, I haven't read um, the, you know, the bound paperback or the ebook. I'm sure that the story is just as good if you read it that way, if you're not an audiobook person, but I can really vouch for the audiobook itself. Uh, the Lesser Dead, it concerns a, um, it's the other book on our list that is about a New York vampire kind of living in the subways. This teenager vampire but you know kind of perpetual teenager because he's been al alive for a long time it's told completely out of sequence but the main story concerns him investigating these little kid vampires that have been showing up around the city and you know breaking all these vampire rules like i think they call i think they call it um i think they call it what do they call peel yeah if you kill if you kill a human you've peeled them like you can drink without peeling them um these kids are going crazy going ham peeling people left and right and they seem like little kids so he just wants to inform them and like you know fix them and, and, and initiate them into like the rules of vampiredom it's a really creepy book it's a really um towards the end a really kind of heartbreaking heart-wrenching book and that's not really a spoiler to say because like the the narrator is an unreliable narrator and he's very upfront with the fact that this is like a tragedy that you're listening to but you're not exactly sure how it's going to work out it's a it's structurally it's like perfect. It's, it's such a good book. If you're interested in vampire books at all, in vampire novels at all, and you're, you've watched this video to almost the 15 minute marks, so you probably are. Christopher Buhlman's The Lesser Dead. That's five vampire books that you probably haven't read. And because every episode on Bla Project Black T-Shirt, I like to do a book review and a movie review, I'm not going to leave you just those, uh, just those books if you don't like, if you don't like reading. Uh, I am wearing my Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark t-shirt as one of my favorite vampire movies of all time. My other favorite is uh, Let the Right One In, the Swedish one uh, directed by Tomas Alfredsson. Let the Right One In is one of those very, very rare films that I actually think uh, the movie is better than the book. John Abnett uh, Lindquist's book is, is great, but I read it after I saw the movie and I feel like the book over explains things that the movie leaves just enough just a barely a hint of what's going on so you've got to do a lot more mental legwork to piece everything together and it's just like kind of a beautiful pseudo love story let the right one in near dark if you want to throw those on in between reading these books on this list i think you're gonna have a great vampiric time look at me i'm so pale I'm your vampire host, Adam Caesar. If you like this video, please hit like. If you really like this video and this is the first one you've watched from me, check out all my other videos. Please subscribe. I try to do this every week. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. Sometimes uh, I lose my voice. Like I said, I write books. If you want to check out the new version of Video Night, please do that. You can check out all my other books. Some of them are cheaper than others. Some of them are even free. If you sign up for my mailing list, I send you a, um, a free ebook. So that's my pitch. I'm Adam Caesar, and I'll see you guys next week. Happy reading.